Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Baker. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I would like to talk with you today about the Caitlin Clark effect and its consequences, but I want to speak about that from a psychological perspective. Well, if you've been paying attention to sports at all, then you know that Caitlin Clark is the most famous woman to have ever played the sport of basketball. She finished her collegiate career last year as the number one leading scorer for all men and all women who've ever played college basketball, and she led the nation in assists at the same time. Uh, the championship game that she played uh, drew in close to 19 million views, which is the most watched game, college game or pro game, either men or women in the last five years. She has a gigantic following. She was the number one draft pick this last year in the WNBA, and of course now the attendance at uh, WNBA games is up 150%, and media viewership has tripled what it was before. And Clark is responsible for this. Her style of play and her success at the sport is drawing unbelievable number of fans to the sport, and that's what we call the Caitlin Clark effect. She's the first rookie in WNBA history to score a triple-double, that means double digits, 10 or more points in both rebounds, points in the game, and assists. It's the first woman to have ever done that as a rookie, and only 12 women, uh, women have done that in the whole history of the, of the WNBA. Now, you'd think the WNBA would be grateful to have a star like this and bringing this kind of viewership to the game. They are not. Uh, they've been critical of her. The uh, leading women in, in the WNBA have minimized her effect. They've tried to say, oh, you know, people are coming to see me too, uh, and uh, clearly dismissive and minimizing of, of Caitlin Clark, which is baffling given that they've been trying to grow the sport, and the women who are in the sport now are not welcoming her at all. And instead, their response has been to uh, leave her off uh, the Olympic team, which is populated by stars in the WNBA. Uh, and the reason was that she was too popular. Uh, you can see here Diana Tarasa mocking her. She says 20-year-olds is too young. She's actually 22. Uh, and then when it was pointed out to her, now, wait a minute, in your rookie year, didn't you get on the Olympic team? And she says, uh, yeah, after I won three national championships. Again, pushing Clark under the bus and mocking her. So it's, it's uh, astounding uh, that uh, Clark is getting this amount of disrespect uh, from the WNBA. Now, the thing that concerns me is not only their psychological disrespect, but the physical abuse of Clark. Here you see her being knocked down. Didn't look like a basketball play to me. This was, I mean, it's a rough sport. So she's going to get knocked down with, from women who are actually trying to get the ball. But there are certain instances where it's just pure hatred. Here's the one by Kennedy Carter. After she scores, she comes up to Caitlin from the backside, knocks her to the floor. The ball's not even in play. Look at her teammates cheering from the sideline, cheering to see this, to see Caitlin Clark simply knocked to the floor for no apparent reason. Uh, maybe there was some trash talk going off behind them. Here you see her calling her the B word as she knocks her to the floor. So you have to ask yourself, what is going on with this kind of physical abuse, this kind of hatred towards a young star coming into the league? Uh, I, usually this kind of uh, targeting hatred towards uh, a player is the result of their narcissism, but Clark's not really saying anything. Here, Kennedy Carter went on to minimize her, saying, I'm not even going to comment on the abuse. And besides that, what does she even bring to the table, man? Now, this particular uh, knockdown was really egregious and bothering to me. You'll see Caitlin's coming down, looking back. She's not paying attention, and boom, she gets floored by a player. Again, what was the point of that play other than just to knock her to the floor? I believe that's the play where she had her ear eardrum ruptured. Here she is getting hit in the head. This was a technical foul by uh, uh, Angel Reese. And the physical abuse of Clark is, there's no question about it, that she's being targeted and, and attempted to, attempting to hurt her. So we have to ask ourselves, as a psychologist, I have to ask myself, what's going on? Uh, psychologically, what's going on behind women wanting to do this kind of damage to an up-and-coming star coming into the league? So let's look at this from a psychological perspective. If you give children drawings and ask them to rate them, and you give them several drawings by the same, say, eight or ten other kids, here are these eight or ten kids are artists, we're going to give you the raw drawings, we want you to rate them. Which one do you think is best? Well, boys will rate the drawings based on merit. In other words, if Susan is the best artist, I'm going to 
say that, that she's number one, and the next time Susan's drawing is in the group, if Susan's in there, and, and if it's the best, I'm going to give Susan uh, the top ranked again. Now, little girls want to spread out who's the best. So girls uh, evaluate based on what we call social equity. They will, if Susan is the best the first time, then the second time around, the girls will give Bobby the best. And the third time around, girls will tend to get Su give Susan the best. So girls want to spread out uh, who, who wins. That, we call that social equity. They're interested in everybody having an equal amount of praise. They don't like hierarchies. Little boys are comfortable with hierarchies. Little girls are not. This extends on into adulthood. We've tested college professors at the collegiate level. And university professors who are female are more, more likely than their male professors at the same university to cancel a speaker if, they come, if they're uncomfortable with what the speaker has to say. We don't want anyone to stand out. University professors who are female are more likely than male uh, university professors to vote to have a colleague dismissed, one of their colleagues dismissed, if they feel the research is controversial. Men will say, no, if the research is accurate and good, it should be published. Women will say, well, if it's controversial, no, I don't think we should have that kind of person here on our campus. That Again, their concern is with social equity. Now, ways psychologists try to understand this is that if you ask professors whether truth or social equity is most important, they'll say it's truth. If, if the research is accurate, if it's true, I don't care if it's controversial, I think truth is more important than social equity, than everyone getting a voice. If you ask female college professors that same question, what do you think is more important, truth or social equity? They'll say, well, it's complicated. What does this mean? <clears throat> Our understanding is that men like to form large coalitions. And this has been true for all of history. For the last couple hundred thousand years, men have been warriors. And if they need to go to war, they need to know who's the best, who's the smartest, who's the most popular. Who, who are people going to follow? And they want to recognize that because they want to include that person in their large coalition. Men are concerned about the survival of the group. That's always been true, and we're still raising our little boys thinking that way. They want them to be prepared to go into war, to be a warrior for the survival of the group. Women, on the other hand, have had to protect themselves. Women have had to uh, form small, loyal alliances because they have to protect their place Women are more valuable than men when it comes to the preservation of the race. I mean, think about it. If you had a village with 100 women, women and one men, that race is going to propagate and, and survive. If you have a village with 100 men and one women, that's going to die off pretty fast. So women have to protect themselves, although, you know, the, the first example would be one happy guy, but they'd be able to populate the earth faster. So, you know, this uh, saying that we all have women and children first when it comes to catastrophe, that's to save the whole race. It's built into us, it's wired into us, that women have to protect themselves. And they, they are quite easily made to feel jealous and threatened by newcomers who come into the, the group because they could be replaced. I could be replaced in my marriage. I could be replaced. My husband might go for the younger girl. So if a more popular girl comes in and she stands out in some way, then she's a threat to me. So uh, the way we've said this in psychology is that men have always had to be warriors. Women have always had to be warriors. So you have women today who are worried that Caitlin Clark is coming in and going to steal some of their popularity. They're going to, they automatically feel replaced and they experience her as a threat. Now you'll see in the, in the comments uh, the men who comment on this phenomenon going on, I mean, why are all these women hating on Caitlin Clark? If you look at the NBA players and what they have to say, and even the commentators who are male, they're going to say to the women, hey, you know, grow your sport, grow your group, pay attention to what's good for the group. Don't be petty, they're calling it petty, and just be concerned about your own popularity. Here's what uh, uh, LeBron James had to say. For anyone that's you know, in sports that's flown commercial or flown, you know, charter, that should be celebrated. And it's because of Caitlin Clark. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. Caitlin Clark is the reason why a lot of great things is going to happen for the WNBA. Um, but for her individually, I don't think she should get involved. Though nothing that's being said, just go have fun, enjoy. Here's Charles Barkley. You women out there, <laughs> y'all petty, man. LeBron, you 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlin Clark. 
Y'all petty, girls. <laughs> I expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world. Yeah, you are. Y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters, <laughs> all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. Don't be petty like dudes. Listen, what she's accomplished, give her her flowers. Stop being petty, all you women He's out got there. his own personality for sure. She got y'all ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table, but y'all being petty like dudes. LeBron, <laughs> you 100% right. Y'all girls, stop being petty. Kayla Clark, thank you for bringing all that money and shine to the WNBA. See, what, the, what you're getting from men is, hey, grow the sport, protect the group, do what's good for all of us, for the survival of the sport, protect the whole tribe. That's their... That's the emphasis you're hearing from men. It's built into them to be warriors and to recognize the need to protect the talented for the sake of the whole group. Now, of course, men are competitive. Rivalry happens between both men and women in sports. I, I'm not saying that that isn't true. Of course that's true. LeBron James was not selected to the All-Star team his rookie year. Kobe Bryant rode the bench his first year. And today, rookies try to dunk over LeBron in order to you know, get that photo photo shot. But yes, men are very, very competitive. I'm not, not saying they're not, but no one is trying to injure someone and take them out. Now, many commentators are calling this jealousy. Uh, and in some ways, I get that because Caitlin Clark is this brand new girl coming into the league and she got a, 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 a deal, a special endorsement deal. She's brand new into the league and she got a special endorsement deal from Nike for $28 million. Now, that really upset a number of women in the league who've been playing for years, uh, that, that they were jealous over that. I've been playing for years. Why isn't that attention coming to me? Now, some of the women who are speaking out about this issue, about the Caitlin Clark effect, feel that it has to do with race. And we can't say that that's not true. She's become the face of the WNBA, but she doesn't look like the players in the WNBA, most of them. So there's certainly that's certainly an issue. There's a racial component to, to the the feelings, the animosity towards Caitlin Clark. But I don't think jealousy explains it completely. Jealousy is a triangle. It's two people competing for the same thing. So there's a love triangle of uh, two people wanting the same thing. So you might say Diana Taurasi would like a $28 million shoe deal and Caitlin Clark got it, so I'm jealous. I'm jealous of this third thing we're competing for. But there's something else going on that's much worse than jealousy and it's envy. Now envy is different because envy is between two people. Envy is when I look at you and I see that you've got something that I will never have. So every time I look at you, I resent you. It makes me hate you because you make me feel inferior. So envy is rooted in the feeling of inferiority. That if I look at you and every time you in my line of sight, I'm reminded of what I don't have and I'll never have, it makes me hate you and it makes me want to destroy you. That's the kind of uh, emotion that makes you want to attack someone and hurt them because they need to disappear. You need to take them out because in, in your, your own mind, they remind you of what you don't have and you never will have. Now, I think that's a better explanation for this kind of hatred, this kind of viciousness that we see uh, exacted towards Caitlin Clark, where she's uh, clearly there's an attempt to injure her that's going on that we said makes the statement we don't want you here we want you gone and if if i injure you to the point where you can't play anymore great because you're out of my line of sight envy is destructive there's nothing good that comes from this kind of destruction that seeks to hurt another human being serena williams said it best if people are negative it's because they can't do what you do that's envy i look at you and I see that you're doing something that I can't do, and that makes me feel bad every time I look at you. That's envy, and envy is, is destructive. So what are we gonna do? What's the solution? There is a solution. Uh, Charles Darwin said it best. It's not the strongest that survive, or the most intelligent. It's the one most adaptable to change. Adapt or die. What am I saying? Women in the WNBA, you're warriors now. Uh, We've evolved, society's evolved, where we have women competing and at the highest level of athletics, and you are now warriors. So that means you need to adopt a warrior mentality. You need to protect the group. You need to fight for the, for the survival of the group. I would say you, you have to adapt. The women who are 
looking like they're jealous or petty or envious of Kate and Clark are caught in an outdated mindset. You are now the warriors of today. And I'm saying we need to accept the reality that when young talent comes along, we need to embrace that for the good of the group. I think this will happen. I think we're going to see the greats in the WNBA embrace Caitlin Clark because they are the warriors, warriors who are fighting for the survival of the entire sport, for the good of their tribe, for the good of the group. That's what warriors do. I'd say <clears throat> focus on the survival of the group. Women, you are warriors now. If Caitlin Clark participates in the sport and brings all these new eyes to the sport, that's good for women's basketball. Caitlin Clark is good for women's basketball. And if she, the next time she gets injured, it's not just a ruptured eardrum, it's a torn ACL. That's bad for women's basketball. Everyone in the WNBA will lose if Caitlin Clark gets that injured. What I say to the women of the WNBA, you are modern warriors. Go to war for the survival of the group. Thanks.